Hello everybody, I'm Hassan Tariq. The topic would be objects of desire. So basically, who am I? I'm a storyteller and who uses words and images. By profession, I'm a creative manager at Orient and McCann, Pakistan, and by hobby, a fashion blogger, which is what I'll be talking about, speaking through images. That's, that's my interest, my hobby, and um, I, like to, I like to do that. So before we actually delve into things, I like to talk about objects of desire. So I just got a screenshot of those uh, Definitions, the keywords, object and desire. Object, a material thing that can be seen and touched. Desire, a strong feeling of uh, wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. So combining that, so I would just, so in my view, that would entail to be anything tangible or intangible that stores emotions, desires, and feelings, as for Kant talked about it, touched upon it through the element of design. So this is like a painting, everybody, knows this, Van Gogh, The Starry Night, and Galaxy Soho by one of the foremost artists, architects of our time, Zaha Hadid, which is uh, your, uh, the pre presenter before Furkan had a lamp design just resembling that, so I think, just reminded me of that. And this is one of the Gucci campaigns that really uh, catapulted the brand from being bankrupt to one of the most uh, profit-making brands in the fashion, it's, it's a, like a fashion case study. So. There's different forms of arts. What I'll be talking about arts, so I'll be talking about through the idea of using images, how it's art and how we use it to communicate. So I'll be talking vis-a-vis -vis images. And images, when we talk about images, and especially when I talk about images, it's about fashion, fashion images, fashion photography, if you may want to call that. So what they, well, what they exactly do is create a fantasy create a visual, so basically, that's what they do. But since I'm also working in an advertising agency, so you have to look at it through a brand perspective when you're working for companies, especially fashion brands. So they need to create visual vocabulary that s serves them to speak with their audiences and create an identity brand ID that sort of positions the brand in the mind of the end user. So, so fashion brands communicate through their images. Hence, objects of desire is the whole fantasy and things associated with it. I like to I'm, I just read this book recently, Fashion Brands, Branding Style from Ermine Tuzar, and it was a very like apt quote that I like to uh, read it out to you. And there was a guy who said this, um, I like to think that once you understand a brand, you can imagine every element within its specific world, even down to the objects. Is there a particular Saint Laurent chair, telephone, or lamp? The answer is yes. So we're talking about in the realm of fashion. And those visual vocabulary, though, creating a fantasy that serves the purpose. So everything associated with that fantasy, the, the bag, the clothes we wear, the thing from, from furniture and design, it's part of that whole fantasy. So I'd like to just take you guys uh, through a brief overview of one of the foremost uh, Western photographers that have really uh, redefined fashion. Helmut Newton, I'm sure you guys are aware of that. And he said, my job as a portrait photographer is to seduce, amuse, and entertain. And these are some of his prophylic images that he's uh, captured over the decades. And they still shape the ethos of our fashion photographers in the West. Not in the East, but definitely in the West. And this is where they derive their inspiration from. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to delve into stuff, but we're going to jump to the next one, Richard Avedon. Just, ar just advertising departments with legs and high heels. So this really interested me because I'm from fashion, like I work in advertising, but I have really high interest in fashion. So it was really apt. Because when you combine advertising with fashion, you're able to sort of communicate uh, more fluidly in terms of creating a world of illusion, fantasy, however you may want to call it. And of course, we cannot forget uh, Audrey Hepburn. And this is a very apt quote from the New York Times about him. The New York Times said that his fashion portrait uh, photographs helped define America's image of style, beauty, and culture for the last half century. So these are the, fo the, uh, the photographers that have really shaped the ethos of fashion uh, as we know it in the West. And then he's a living photographer, Mario Testino. He photographs for Vogue and, and all the major brands in fashion the, um, of the day. So my, my pictures are my eyes. I photograph what I see and what I want to see. It's being able to see and capture it and communicate through that to your audiences. It's all about that. And 
that's why a good photographer, whoever does that, he's, when he's able to capture what he sees on paper uh, through image, he's a good photographer. And that's how they're, you can tell. And his pictures, you can tell without even knowing that it's, uh, you know, without even being told that he's taken them because he's established himself in that realm. And then another one, uh, Stephen Missell. And that's an actual picture of the guy. And it resembles a portrait. R perhaps looks like a Rembrandt portrait. Because this is what these guys are, because their reference points are, you know, culture, art, the Western art. So, and they allow them, because it's, for them, it's about telling a story, telling a narrative. That's what I do as an ad man. So for him, it's, it's a quote from him that, it's, that says, not because they are controversial that I like to tell a story or capture images, but because they say a little more than just a beautiful woman in a beautiful dress. And then uh, Peter Lindbergh, the woman is always more important than the clothes. Fashion photographers are the new painters of our time. That's very apt, I think. And these are some of his uh, iconic images. This is one of the very iconic images, uh, supermodels from the early 90s, and that has and still goes on to redefine what it means. Uh, well, actually, it really changes uh, the whole fashion ball game, as we know. That's pretty much about it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.